Hardware isn't something that India is known for. And it's also not something that a lot of Indian startups pursue. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, unlike in the world of software, bootstrapping isn't really an option when it comes to hardware. R&D, prototyping, and manufacturing cost a lot of money. And so unless you're independently wealthy, bootstrapping a hardware startup just isn't gonna work. Which leaves two other options, crowdfunding and venture capital. In the United States, platforms like Kickstarter have empowered hardware startups to build products that VCs won't back. But this crowdfunding trend hasn't been as popular here in India. Which leaves us with a third option, venture capital. But this option too, isn't without its challenges. Like I said earlier, India isn't known for hardware, but China is. And so a lot of the international venture capital that's going into hardware is focused on China, or companies that are outsourcing their R&D or their manufacturing to China. Nobody does hardware as well as China does, and VCs know this. But in India, there's a very strong anti-China consumer sentiment right now. And the government of India is also trying to reduce India's reliance upon anything and everything coming out of China, while also working very hard to make India a serious source of competition to China when it comes to manufacturing. And by all accounts, they are succeeding. According to American real estate firm Cushman & Wakefield's 2021 Global Manufacturing Risk Index, India is currently the most attractive global manufacturing destination after China. Which of course means that India is seeing a lot of manufacturing business right now from international customers, many of which have ended their contracts with Chinese manufacturers in favor of Indian ones. But there's also a huge amount of demand from the local market for made in India hardware. And in the last couple of years, we've started to see an uptick in the number of startups that are building physical technology products to meet that demand. And those are the startups that we're going to be talking about in today's video. India's top 10 hardware startups coming up right after this. Starting things off at number 10, we have Bengaluru-based smart lock maker OpenApp. Back in 2014, Gotama Godha successfully sold his cupcake company, Cupcakery, and was excited to start a new venture with his exit money. But this time, he wanted to go beyond food. He wanted to start up in the hardware space. And he settled on padlocks. See, most people in 2015 were using regular metal locks. And this is still true to this day. But Gotama, along with his two co-founders, Sidesh Kaluskar and Rajshekar Jene, decided to upgrade these boring locks into smart IoT-enabled locks. Today, their smart padlocks and door locks are being used across 500,000 locations, and they're currently the largest largest smart lock maker in India. To date, OpenApp has raised $2.2 million from their investors. Next up at number 9, we have Mumbai-based mixed reality startup AjnaLens. Founded by Abhijit Patil, Abhishek Tomar, Gaurav Godbole, and Pankaj Raut in 2014, AjnaLens actually began its journey at IIT Bombay. And at the time, the company was called Dimension NXG. They were experimenting with 3D printing, 3D scanning, and computer vision before eventually settling on mixed reality glasses in 2017. They spent the next three years researching and developing these glasses before eventually launching their first product, Ajna Bolt, for the Indian military in 2020. Then, in August of 2021, they launched Ajna X for enterprises, which is sort of like an extension of the screens that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. You can pair the Ajna X with a keyboard and a mouse and open up files, images, videos, and 3D holograms all around you. To date, Ajna Lens has raised $2.2 million from their investors. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Bengaluru-based Smart RO Water Purifier Drink Prime. Founded by Manas Hota and Vijendra Reddy in 2016, Drink Prime began its journey as Waterwala in 2014, with the goal of bringing structure to India's disorganized drinking water space. They did this by delivering clean 20-liter water cans on demand, but eventually realized that if they were going to truly revolutionize this space, they were going to need to build a more scalable solution. 
It was at this point in 2016 that Waterwalla became Drink Prime with the launch of their Aura Water Purifier, which Drink Prime's customers can rent using monthly subscription plans. These machines were researched and developed in-house, and Drink Prime has partnerships with a handful of Indian manufacturers who build these purifiers before they're sent out to Drink Prime's customers, of which there are currently more than 25,000 across Bengaluru. So far, Drink Prime has raised $3.9 million from their investors. Coming in at number 7 now, we have Hyderabad-based health tech startup Makers Hive. Founded by Harsha Reddy Bonguletti, Prana Vimpati, and Suren Maru Mamula in 2018, Makers Hive's flagship product CalArm is India's first fully functional bionic hand, and it only costs between 3.5 and 4 lakh rupees, which is about a tenth of the cost of similar products outside of India. CalArm has 18 predefined grips, 4 custom grips, and an app that monitors the health of the bionic arm and can also be used to teach new grips. While this product is still in development, Maker's Hive has received hundreds of pre-orders, and they've also raised $9 million from Starfish Growth Partners to start manufacturing CalArm quickly, and then eventually go on to build exoskeleton products for defense, industrial, and medical applications. Next up at number 6, we have Mumbai-based Atomberg Technologies. The startup's founders, Manoj Mina and Sibabrata Das, were working on research projects for organizations like ISRO and the DRDO when they came up with the idea for Atomberg in 2012. This idea began with a prototype for an energy-efficient motor, which Manoj and Sibabrata quickly realized could be used to build energy-efficient ceiling fans. See, ceiling fans in India typically operate between 75 and 80 watts, but with Atomberg's special motor, that number is reduced to just 28 watts, meaning that they're 66% more efficient. After setting up a manufacturing facility in Mumbai, Atomberg Technologies went to market in 2015, and have since sold more than 1 million units. So far, Atomberg has raised $20.5 million from their investors, as the startup is now planning to expand and into other home appliances like mixers, grinders, and air coolers. Moving on to number 5 now, we have Hyderabad-based Smartron. One of Smartron's founders, Mahesh Lingaredi, spent more than a decade building a semiconductor startup called Soft Machines in the United States, which he ended up selling to Intel in 2016 in a deal worth $250 million. And by that point, he had already started his next venture, Smartron, which he co-founded in 2014 with Rohit Rati and Narsi Reddy Posham. Now, Smartron is both a hardware and a software startup. They've got physical products like laptops, smartphones, electric bikes, and in the future, IoT-enabled home automation products. But Smartron's larger goal is to build an underlying AI-powered ecosystem called Tron X, which would essentially be an Indian competitor to ecosystems like Google's with Google Assistant or Apple's with Siri or Amazon's with Alexa. Now, in case you wanted to know whether or not Smartron is making their products in India, the answer is a hard no. Here's a quote from Mahesh explaining that perspective, and you're welcome to pause the video if you want to read it, but to summarize, Mahesh believes in outsourcing manufacturing to China the same way that companies like Samsung and Apple do, so that Smartron can focus more on the designing and engineering side of things. To do this, they've raised approximately $30 million from their investors, 90% of which has been spent exclusively on R&D. Coming in at number 4 now, we have Mumbai-based Emotex. Founded in 2014 by Jintan Raikar, Prashant Younger, and Sneva Swani, Emotex spent their first few years doing R&D before eventually launching their first personal robot called Miko in 2017, and then an updated version of this robot Miko 2 in 2019. Now, these robots were designed, developed, and patented in India, but their assembly has taken place in both China and Taiwan, and then more recently in India as of 2019. But let's talk a little bit about the Miko 2 which can interpret a child's mood and behavior using AI and computer vision, and also engages the child in educational conversations on predetermined topics that the child's parent chooses using a smartphone app. Besides this, these robots can be used to facilitate video calls between working parents and their kids. 
Miko 2s are being sold now in more than 140 countries around the world, and so far, Emotix investors have pumped $50.4 million into the startup. Next up at number three, we have California-based smart fitness startup Goki. Goki was founded in Mumbai by Vishal Gundo, a serial entrepreneur who sold his game development company India Games to Disney for $100 million in 2011. But building that startup had taken its toll. Vishal had gone from being fit and healthy to weighing over 100 kilos. And so in an effort to get back in shape, he used his exit money to start Goki in 2014. After some R&D, which was done in India, Goki started selling wearable fitness devices, which were manufactured in China, to track vital health statistics like oxygen levels, blood pressure, and heart rate. Today, Goki is the second largest wristband wearables company in India by sales, second only to Xiaomi, with a 13.6% market share. And they've also raised $52.6 million from their investors. Oh, and in late 2020, they announced that they were committed to shifting their manufacturing from China to India. Moving on to number two now, we have New Delhi-based Imagine Marketing. Founded by Aman Gupta and Samir Mehta in 2013, Imagine Marketing launched audio wearables brand Boat in 2016. Right away, they capitalized on India's growing community of smartphone users by selling charging cables and adapters. Then, as these users began streaming music with their new affordable Geo 4G plans, Boat started selling speakers and earphones. And they were so successful with this that they're now the world's fifth largest earwear brand. Then, after audio hardware, they also got into smartwatches. And today, across all of their product lines, Boat sells more than 15,000 units a day and brought in revenue totaling 701 crore rupees in the financial year of 2020 and a profit of 49 crore rupees. To date, the startup has raised $116.3 million from their investors, $100 million of which was raised in January of 2021. They're going to be using some of these funds to shift a majority of their manufacturing from China to India. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Singapore-based robotics startup Grey Orange. Founded by Akash Gupta and Sameh Kohli in Gurugram in 2011, Grey Orange is the perfect example of a hardware startup building from India for the world, as only about 10% of its revenue comes from Indian customers. They have R&D centers in Gurugram and Boston, their prototyping happens in Shenzhen, and their robots, which are deployed in over 70 warehouses around the world, increase warehouse productivity and efficiency. And of course, they also lower costs by eliminating the need for a lot of human workers. So far, Grey Orange has raised $170 million from their investors, and they're also planning on going public in the United States through an SPAC at some point in 20. 2021 or 2022 at a valuation between 1.5 and 1.7 billion dollars. All right, those were our picks for India's top 10 hardware startups. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from it. And if you did, it would mean a lot to us if you could hit the like button. And also, if you know of somebody who you think would enjoy this video, then please do share it with them. That would also mean a lot to us. And also, if you haven't already subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We post new videos every single week about Indian startups, entrepreneurs, and the latest news. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires, and I will see you in the next one.